Hello, BookTube. Once upon a time, Sarah, the bookish knitter, back when she made videos, <laughs> uh, used to do a regular thing where she would show the next five books she's going to read. It was lots of fun. It was just a, a just approximate thing. It was done, of course, in, in Sarah's way of doing everything, which is, these are the ones that I'm planning on, but my plans could change. Uh, I love those videos, and I love doing them myself. I thought I'd do another My Next Five Reads video today. Only, uh, mine probably won't change. But only because the time frame necessary for me to read my next five books is drastically shorter than the time frame for most people. So there'd be no reason for me to change them. I will, I'll probably just power through them and we'll see what we see. So why don't we go through those five books, the, five, the next five books that I'm going to read, at least two or three of them today and tonight. So this, these five books will be done by the end of the weekend. Uh, now the first one is by Maureen Callahan, and it is a Kennedy hit job book. I read every book about the Kennedys, whether they're a hit job or not. In fact, sometimes the hit jobs are more enjoyable than the, the empty pieties. Uh, and, of course, the, the holy grail here, the thing that I never, almost never see, is serious books about the Kennedys. Not serious in terms of the allegations being leveled at them, but serious in terms of the writing and the thinking involved. It's so easy to write a dumb book about the Kennedys. It's just as easy to write a dumb book about the House of Windsor. Uh, so I have my suspicions about this book. This is It's called Ask Not, The Kennedys and the Women They Destroyed. Uh, and the reason that I think this is going to be not only a Kennedy hit job book, obviously, from the title and subtitle, but also a dumb Kennedy book, uh, is because all three of the women on this cover sought out the Kennedys for their celebrity. Pretty tough to make a case that they were destroyed when they could have lived their lives normally without, <laughs> without seeking out the notoriety that they would get from the Kennedy family. Uh... The Kennedy family did not did not destroy women. <laughs> it might have made some of them unhappy, uh, but it also made well. Anyway, anyway, um, we will see. Maureen Callahan could surprise me. Uh, I don't like the attack angle of the subtitle, and I especially don't like the irony of the choices on the cover. But uh, the book could surprise me. Uh, then this next one I have already read. This will be a reread, but I haven't read it in a long time. And it, it came to me for free. The ebook came to me for free. I sign up for those uh, a lot of those your daily ebook deal sites. You give them your email, and they put the day's email, the day's ebook deals in your inbox. I signed up for like five or six of those, uh, and I get emails from them every day. They're every day. They they never fail. Uh, the only thing that can fail in those is is you. Because, of course, you're, you should not be buying anything <laughs> from those, those daily reminders, those daily deal type things. You shouldn't be buying anything. The daily deals that I sign up for, some of them are all free ebooks, but some of them are not. Some of them are, here are two free ebooks, here's a 99 cent book, here are a couple of $1.99 books. And I admit, the 99 cent books, the $1.99 books, they look tempting. Your answer should be a, a blanket no. <laughs> Just a blanket no, no matter how tempting they are. Don't do it. Because otherwise you'll have spent $150 in a month in no time at all. Easily you will have done so. Now, now my approach, my philosophy for those deal aggregator sites is if it's free, I'll take it. <laughs> if it's free, I'll take it. I'll take almost anything if it's free. But this, this I would have paid money for if I found, a, for instance, a hardcover copy at the Brattle Bookshop. Uh, this is Ira Wolfert, and this is his book Battle for the Solomons. Lovely new new cover here, a new look to it. This is an ebook of his book, Battle for the Solomons. Uh, he was a reporter right there at the scene. So there have been later bi uh, books about the Battle of the Solomons, but the two best accounts of this epic confrontation, 1942 and World War II, uh, the two best accounts were by men who were there to see it, Samuel Elliott Morrison and Ira Wolfert. And this was free. <laughs> this, was, this was just offered free. Great. Fantastic. Uh, so... Uh, this will be a reread. I haven't read this in a long time. I'm sure I will enjoy it. He has a real, a uh, real way with uh, punchy prose. Then this next one is by Graham Shipley, uh, and a bunch of other contributors. A bunch of this is a big fat anthology. I get the impression uh, from the physical copy and from the ebook that this is probably expensive. I haven't looked and seen, but I wouldn't doubt that it's a hundred dollars. Uh, this is Geographers of the Ancient Greek World. 
a must-have classical volume uh, from the scriptures that I've read. I haven't actually seen what kind of a job it is, but I find it hard to believe it will, that it will fail. Uh, the description is, this is uh, geographical writing, writing about the world, various cities, the, the various customs of various lands. It was a very popular thing in ancient Greece. The most popular, probably the most popular example is Pausanias, who did a, a two-volume, a big, fat two-volume work in Penguin Classics that's all about him just traveling in Greece. But uh, Ptolemy did it, Strabo did it, a whole bunch of other, a whole bunch of, of major Greek authors have done travel, geography, geography and travel guide things. Uh, it's not heroic, it's not epic, it's usually not poetic in any way, so I guess you could say that it's, it's not a major kind of ancient Greek literature, but it is fascinating. And uh, when you're reading, when you're carefully reading and annotating your two-volume Penguin Pausanias, you might forget, you might lose track of the fact that a lot of people wrote this stuff. It wasn't just the big names, it was a lot of them. And this huge volume not only gives new translations of all of the famous Greek geographers, but also new translations of all the ones who aren't famous. They're all in here, with tons of footnotes, tons of critical apparatus, tons of introductions, and maybe maps. I think this thing might have maps as well. Uh, so I, 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 haven't, I haven't dug into it, but I, it's going to take a while. Uh, this is the thing that I mentioned just cavalierly at the beginning of the video, that these next five books probably will be done by the end of the weekend. If anything's going to throw that off, it's going to be this one. Because not only is there going to be a lot more meat on the bone here, but I'm going to want to pay more attention to it. I'm going to lose hours, especially if it has maps, and the maps are good. Uh, so, yeah. this I might be working on this for a while. I will I will blast my way through, especially the uh, the not so much the new translations, but the critical stuff, the introductions, the elaborations, appendices, if there are any. I'll blast my way through them right away. Uh, I'm not I'm not all that eager to read <laughs> Pausanias even in a new translation, but you never know. I I know the Penguin translation quite well. Uh, maybe this. This translator, I don't know if it's Shipley or not, maybe maybe this translator will, will do something really interesting. Uh, I'm up for it, either way, but it will slow me down. <laughs> Definitely, it will slow me down. Uh, then we have uh, Supernatural Historical Fiction. This is by D.H. Shelcher, and it's called Then Came Darkness. Terrific cover here. This was also one of those ebook deal sites. I believe this is set in the 1930s, where uh, a valley has to face... Uh, a murderer and also the Great Depression and something else, something supernatural that starts to descend from the hills <laughs> and engulf them as well. So I don't know if this will have a, you know, a plucky hero or a happy ending. I don't know if there'll be a light that needs to be preserved or carried or whatnot. I have no idea. I don't, that's one of the things I love about these daily ebook deals is that I just have no idea what I'm getting. No idea at all. I've never heard of this author. I would never see this book in a bookstore. I would never know about it if not for these aggregator sites. That's what I love most about them is that they're keeping me at least partially in touch with an indie world that I wouldn't know about at all otherwise, right? That is the that is the downfall, the, the one downside of indie publishing, the only one remaining, is that you don't have the institutional P, uh, PR sway of a major publisher. If, 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 uh, who's the name again? D.H. Schlaucher? If D.H. Schlaucher had gotten this book published with Penguin Random House, well, then you would see it in your bookstore, whether you're looking for it or not. You look at the new release tables. No one is strong enough to go into a, a new retail bookstore and ignore the new release tables. You'd see it there. You might not be interested in it, but you'd know it exists. Your eyes would see it, whereas you could completely miss it in the indie world. So I'm, I'm grateful to those sites for doing that. I have no idea what I'm in for here. I know one thing that won't be happening. It won't scare me. Horror novels never do. But I don't, I don't hold that against them. I will see what it can do. It might be able to do quite a bit. Uh, and then the final one. This is the, next, uh, the, the last of the next five books I will be reading. This is by Michael Taylor, and it is Impossible Monsters. And it is a dinosaur book, yes. And it's a fossil book, yes. But it has a particular focus. Its particular focus is on what effect finding fossils had on religious fundamentalism. Which Charles Darwin in 1859 very much wanted to soft shoe around. 
he very much did not want to cause problems with the fundamentalist religion, the Christianity of his day. Uh, later scientists have caused much bigger problems, but they don't care. And it does cause problems, right? Because the Bible is supposed to be the inerrant word of God, and fundamentalist Christians believe that it's not just metaphorically and poetically true, but historically true, scientifically true, that it's accurate. So, and the Bible tells the story literally from the beginning. So if you start to uncover absolutely irrefutable evidence that that account in the Bible is wrong, you might not want, you might be mild-mannered or even have once considered the clerisy yourself, as Charles Darwin did, but that's going to be a nuclear bomb going off in the world of fundamentalist Christianity. They're not going to be able to ignore that. Ichthyosaurs in rock are not someone's opinion. <laughs> They're not, there's no way you can put that there. There's no way you can fake that being true. And there's no, absolutely no getting around the obvious interpretation that the deeper something is, the older it is. <laughs> when you dig into the, ge the geological column, you start to see beyond a shadow of a doubt that after the top layer, there are no humans. But there's still a profusion of life. <laughs> All these creatures that lived not only millions of years ago, but four millions of years. Millions of years of ichthyosaurs and tyrannosaurids and and I, that's just the the major marquee dinosaurs we're not even talking about about other creatures the kind of prehistoric creatures that nobody knows anything about they're, they're no they aren't caught they aren't pictured in in elementary school textbooks but because they aren't quite dinosaurs and they aren't quite mammals but they live for millions of years millions of years Sun coming up, sun going down every day. Hurricanes in hurricane season, lightning storms, rain, deformed individuals, droughts, famine, coastlines falling apart, lightning strikes, and you name it, earthquakes. Millions of years of those things. And a pretty clear fossil record that preserves the fact that it happened. Well, the more you see of that fossil record, the more you uncover it, and that started, you know, just a few centuries ago, but the more you uncover that record, the more certain you are that the that the stories in the Bible did not happen. That they're stories. They might be very valuable as stories, some of them beautiful as stories, but they are not accurate. They are not historical. There are no dinosaurs in the Bible, despite what an actual member of the House, U.S. House of Representatives tweeted just the other day. Marjorie Taylor Greene said that dinosaurs are a new nomenclature, a new name for dragons. And dragons and behemoths and whatnot are mentioned in the Bible. And she, they, it, they, they were that then. The Bible is the, you know, the only true word. They are still that. They might still be around. Pure ignorance. Pure ignorance. She just has literally, like on this subject and on so many other subjects, she has no idea what she's talking about. Doesn't have any idea. Thinks, thinks uh, the dinosaurs are Tyrannosaurus Rex and that's it. <laughs> when we have... The fossil record is clear on the lines of development, on lines of evolution for these things, over millions of years. This is just one dinosaur in there. And, oh, well, there, was, there was a dinosaur then, and we, we called it dragons, and now we don't. Now we call it whatever. You know, God, it's ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. What the world of impossible monsters is going to describe, I feel certain, is what the science of, of the fossil record shows us about a world that emerged and thrived for millions of years and then died millions and millions of years before there were any humans, before anyone even remotely thought about writing down legends about Yahweh, before any of that, long, incalculably long before any of that, this was a planet full of life. Uh, it's I, I don't know. This will be it, it, the 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 stuff that I read about this book leads me to believe it's going to be a little bit muckraking, uh, and maybe that's justifiable because science denying religious fundamentalism uh, is incredibly powerful in this country. You can't get elected to office if you believe in science in this country. In any of the non-free part, the the non-free parts of the country are 
sixty percent, seventy percent of the country. And in the non-free parts of the Trump parts of the country, you can't get elected to office if you agree with science. So it's incredibly powerful. It means a lot. It, it, it means that your children won't be taught this stuff in school in half the states in the union. Uh, so I guess a little muckraking is called for. We'll see. We'll see how whether or not that's the tone the author takes. I don't know. I won't. I won't prejudge. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and there you go. Those are my next five books. Uh, they won't take long. The, the big serious work of classical history will take the longest. They won't take long. Uh, and I'm hoping that someday Sarah at the Book Schnitter will make a next five books video of her own. That would be great. Uh, I'd also like to hear from you. What are your next five books if you know or do you plan? I'd love to know either way. Uh, but I'm going to wrap this up for now. Uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, Booktube.